Justice says if somebody does wrong, there should be somebody that has authority to give them what they have earned for themselves. Now, I want to lift us up out of the earthly court system into a heavenly court system, all right? If God's laws, let's say, are the Ten Commandments, okay. you shall not lie, steal, look with lust even, not just commit adultery, but look with somebody, at somebody with lust, have any other gods before the true and living God, if you've ever been naughty as a child with your parents, if you've ever not just murdered somebody physically with a knife, but you're just angry at somebody because they're a jerk or they're a terrible driver, Jesus said that's murder in the heart. That's how God sees us as somebody who's a murderer in the heart because God goes beyond actual actions, but into our heart and our thoughts, all right? Now, if you're like me, you've broken those laws. Fair enough? Yes. All right. So what should the just judge of all the world do with guilty Ivan when you stand before him to give an account for your life? Would he find you innocent or guilty? It wouldn't matter. He could do anything he wants. But what would he find you, innocent or guilty? He wouldn't find me anything. I wouldn't be there in the first place. Work with me. This is what my Bible teaches. So if nothing else, you leave the campus today going, well, at least I get what those Christians are all about. A day of judgment, because we like judgment. We like justice, right? We like it when Jerry Sandusky gets arrested for being a pedophile. And given 30 years, it should have been 300 years. We like that, though, right? Okay, God does too. We get a sense of justice from God who is just. So if God is just, and he's looking into the corners of your heart, the recesses of your mind, not only that, but the things you failed to do by loving people, by being kind to everybody, by helping everybody you could, I would be guilty if I stood before a judge like that. Ivan, would you be innocent or guilty? By your standards, I would be guilty. Okay, by God's standard, you'd be guilty. Okay. Not mine. All right. So if God is just and righteous and holy, and he has a settled anger against sin and wrongdoing, what should God do with Ivan? Take him to heaven or send him to hell? Throw me in the hell. Correct. Right. That's our problem. All right. That's what the Bible teaches. And I think there's nothing more provable than the fact that we've got a big sin problem. Look around the world. Go to Chuck E. Cheese's. There's a big sin problem. Even the little ones have it, right? Yeah. Okay, so God is going to do a day of reckoning, a day of house cleaning, and he'll give people what they deserve. So, dude, according to the Bible, you agree with the Bible. Everybody fails his standard. The just judge much, must give you what you deserve. You'd be going to hell because God is just and righteous and even loving. That was a beautiful story, but uh, really, it is not for me. No, it's a bad story. It's a terrible story. Do you know what hell is like? Yeah, I imagine. Terrible, it right? Pretty awesome. No, yeah. pretty terrible. It's not a kegger with your buddies, and it's not like you know the, the devils are dancing around. They're getting punished too. It's a terrible place because sin requires punishment. That's a bad story, dude. Right? <laughs> yes, it's a bad story. Right? Do you know the gospel of Jesus Christ? No. No idea? Nope. Did you ever go to church as a kid? No. Do you know what Christmas is? Yeah. What is it? It's a fake holiday to buy gifts for everybody. Well, that's true. There's a lot of that going on. I agree with you on that. We have agreement on that. What is the religious understanding of Christmas? It was the birth of Jesus. And who is Jesus according to the Bible? The Son of God. Son of God. Why did that Jesus come to this earth? No idea. I'll tell you. He came to keep all the laws that you and I have broken. So every time you lusted, he didn't. Every time you lied, he told the truth. Every time you were naughty with your parents, he obeyed. Every time you failed to love God the way you should, he did. He kept all the laws. And then, tell me about Easter. What do you know about Easter? No idea. All right, Easter is the, that little week where Jesus Christ, the perfect, sinless, spotless Lamb of God, was beaten by men, was punched in the face, had a crown of thorns smashed onto his head, was spat upon, stripped naked, so abused you couldn't even tell he was a human being he was so disfigured and then he had his hands and his feet nailed to a cross actually he probably didn't have his feet you ever seen those pictures where they have a guy on the cross and it's one foot on top of the other they've been finding nails at crucifixion sites that aren't long enough for that so they think that they actually put the nail through the achilles part they had him straddle the cross and then they put it through the achilles and he hung there on a cross gasping for air because that's how you die when everything pulls down you can't breathe it's like you're in a pool trying to keep your head above water you can't breathe you run out of air and he died do you know why he did that he did it for me you got it right that's right and that's that's, that's a bit why though story. wonder why though why did he do it for you he did it for my sin exactly but why no idea. Well, we just talked about you going to hell if you don't have your sins forgiven. 
All right. He forgave all my sins for me. He will. But why did God do such an incredible thing? No idea. Is it because you're so spanky? No. Right, because our problem is we're not spanky, we're dirty, and we're sinful. It's because the Bible says, in this is love, not that we first love God, but that God loved us and sent his son to be a propitiation for us. God didn't die for the world because we're so wonderful. As if he had a big cosmic refrigerator, he'd have our picture on the refrigerator with magnets because we're just so amazing. We're sinful and dirty and God loves us anyway and demonstrated it by sending his son to die for you a sinner. That is a great story. But I, no, it's a, yeah, I, I thank you, that's a good story, it's exactly. All right, now here's the question, Ivan. Is it true? Is it a true story? Probably. Okay, because that's big, man. If it's not true, no worries. Live, live a life of whatever lifestyle you want to, good, bad, or otherwise. But if it's true, you will have to face God on Judgment Day. And you'll have to give an account for everything you've done. I mean, isn't there something inside of your conscience that says, Guy's right, I've done a lot of bad things. Isn't there any agreement that we have with your conscience right now? No. Nothing? Not even a little bit. What do you think God would have to do to convince you that this story is true? Show himself. He did, 2,000 years ago, and eyewitnesses watched him die and rise from the dead, and they were willing to die because of it. The resurrection of Jesus is the best proof anybody could ever have for you. If he came right now and wrote across the sky, Ivan, believe in me, I'm Jesus. You'd go, ah, Skywriter, the skinny guy set it up in advance, and he walkie-talkied it to him somehow, and he made it appear. And you'd discredit it because you claim you want signs, but you don't want the one who gives the signs. Jesus did miracles. Besides that, he created the world. Come on, what more do you need for proof? He gave you a universe to look around and go, yeah, got to be something here. This, the universe is God's great big cosmic, hello, I'm here, I exist, pay attention. But you're not listening, right? You're not willing to listen. No, sir.